We've been digging around like crazy the last few years, and it feels like a race is on to uncover the most amazing archaeological discoveries. Our planet is overflowing with evidence of ancient civilizations, and we're all desperate to learn more about our own past. But some of these are truly mind-blowing and have the capacity to change everything. From the dazzling mosaic to the oldest footprint ever, here's the 20 most incredible archaeological discoveries. <sighs> Number 20. Stunning Mosaics Uncovered in Ancient City of Zeugma Archaeologists recently made some exciting discoveries in the Turkish city of Zeugma. Three discoveries have given us a chance to see Greek and Roman art that hasn't been seen in thousands of years. When a nearby dam was being built in southern Turkey in 2000, the site was in danger of flooding, which got the attention of archaeologists all over the world. This is how archaeologists uncover what no one was supposed to see. Back then, people's homes were decorated with these kinds of rich mosaics that showed characters from Greek mythology. When archaeologists heard that a nearby dam was going to flood the city, they were motivated to dig. When the Greeks built the city in the 3rd century BC, they then gave it the name Seleucia. In 64 BC, the Roman Empire took over the city and changed its name to Zeugma, which in ancient Greek meant bridge or crossing. Romans controlled the city until 253 AD, when it was taken over by the Persian Sassanids. And now it's resurfaced after all those years to show its treasures once more. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Prehistoric Pedestrians Researchers say that fossilized footprints found in New Mexico show that people were walking across North America about 23,000 years ago. In 2009, the first footprints were found in a bed of dried up lake in White Sands National Park. Scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey recently looked at seeds stuck in the footprints to figure out how old they are. Which, by the way, is ingenious. They think the footprints were made between 22,800 and 21,130 years ago. Wow, I wonder what they would have thought of modern day Albuquerque. Nuclear testing, balloon fiesta, and really good Mexican food, I'm sure they'd love it. Scientists have been trying to figure out when people first came to the Americas after moving around in Africa and Asia for a long time. The new findings may help answer this question. Scientists believed that people moved from Asia to Alaska through a land bridge that's now underwater. Based on different pieces of evidence, such as stone tools, fossilized bones, and genetic analysis, other researchers have given date ranges from 13,000 to 26,000 years ago, or more for when the first people came to the Americas. The new study gives a better idea of when people were definitely in North America, but they probably were there way earlier. Researchers think that at least some of the footprints were made by children and teens who lived during the last ice age. In 2009, David Bustos, who was in charge of the park's resource program, found the first footprints in old wetlands. Over time, he and other people found more in the park, and now we have some amazing data on these ancient people. Number 18. Borobudur. Borobudur is a beautiful Buddhist temple in Java, Indonesia, near Magaling. Borobudur is the biggest Buddhist building in the world. It's a Mahayana Buddhist stupa, which is a type of holy site. There's nothing written about who built Borobudur or what it was meant to be for. The time it took to build the temple was figured out by comparing the carvings on the temple's hidden foot with the inscriptions that were common on royal characters in the 8th and 9th centuries. Most likely, Borobudur was built around the year 750 AD. It's thought that the building took 75 years to finish and was completed during the reign of Samaritanga in 825 AD. The monument is made up of nine square and round platforms stacked on top of each other with a central dome on top. There's 2,672 relief panels and 504 statues of the Buddha all over the place. <laughs> The Buddhist view of the universe fits perfectly with the way Borobudur Temple has been divided vertically into a base, a body, and a top. People think that the universe is made up of three overlapping spheres, called Kamadhatu, 
Rupa Dattu, and Arupa Dattu. These spheres represent the sphere of desires, where we're bound to our desires, the sphere of forms, where we give up our desires but are still bound to name and form, and the sphere of formlessness, where there's neither name nor form. The whole building is a unique blend of the most popular ideas of ancestor worship, like the idea of a mountain with steps, and the Buddhist idea of reaching nirvana. Every year, 2.5 million people visit this site, which is Indonesia's most popular tourist destination, and you can see why. This is an amazing site sacred place. Number 17. The Lost City of Tenia. Archaeologists have found a lot of cool treasures in the lost city of Tenia, which was once a Trojan city in Greece. Experts who have been digging up the city have found many valuable artifacts such as lamps, coins, jewelry, sculptures, and even baths. It has a 670 meter long network of houses and tombs full of gold and silver urns. Myths from the past say that Tenia was built to house prisoners after the Trojan War. During Roman times, it became a wealthy city. Until recently, a lot of people thought that Troy was a myth just like Atlantis or the lost city of gold. But no, it wasn't. It was right here, buried underground, along with a lot of other great towns like Tania. The large number of valuable artifacts found backs up the claims that it was a wealthy city and makes it harder to figure out why it was just suddenly abandoned. Tania was buried under the ground after it was abandoned in 400 AD. Excavations began at the site in 2013. Archaeologists didn't know for sure that this place was Tanea for another five years because they wanted to be sure they had enough proof. Archaeologists who have worked at the site have said that in the past, what they have found might just be the tip of the iceberg of what could be found there. Number 16. The Lost City of Pompeii This is Vesuvius, the volcano that blew its top and buried the city of Pompeii under layers of ash and pumice, freezing it in time. It erupted in the year 79 AD, killing many people. Those who survived fled to nearby towns and cities, taking whatever they could carry with them. This volcano is a stratovolcano, and it could still erupt at any time. No one knows when, but there's always a plan to leave in case there's any warning signs. The World Heritage Site title was given to Pompeii in 1997. It's a very important place because it shows how Romans spent their days, how they built things, how they worked together, and how they lived in the distant past. So much has been learned about history, science, and social science from the excavations at Pompeii. If you're in Italy, you have to go there, and a Pompeii tour from Rome is the best way to do it. There were a lot of bodies found under the ash and pumice that Mount Vesuvius' eruption left behind. In 1863, an Italian architect named Giuseppe Fiorelli saw that many of these had broken apart and left holes in the ash layers. He thought of injecting plaster into these holes to make plaster casts of the bodies of the people who were buried at Pompeii. Since then, this has helped researchers and other architects try and figure out more about what happened during this terrible event. Number 15. Sutton Hu. Edith Pretty wasn't interested in the large mounds or small hills on her land in Suffolk, England, just before World War II broke out in 1939. She asked Basil Brown, a local archaeologist, to dig some of them up to see if there was anything interesting buried inside. Basil made one of the most important discoveries of the 20th century there, a huge wooden ship that had been buried under the ground. The actual wood had been gone for a long time, but you could still see its shape in the soil. It measured 27 meters. At first, the ship and coffin were thought to be a cenotaph, an empty tomb made in honor of a person whose remains are elsewhere. But now most people think that the bones had broken down over time in the soil and there was acid there. But how do we know who was buried there if there's no body? We know the person was a man because of the armor and weapons. The gold items and jewelry shown that this man had a lot of money. The crown and scepter in his hands showed that he was important and powerful. The coins can be dated from around 613 CE onward, which means that the person didn't die before this time. Today, many experts think that the person buried inside the ship was King Raidwald, who ruled East Anglia from about 599 until his death in about 624 CE. But it's also pretty likely that we'll never know for sure. Number 14. Homo Luzonensis. In 2019, an extinct species of human was found in the Philippines. This is a new branch on the family tree. It's called Homo luzonensis after the island of Luzon, which is the largest in the country where it was found. Its physical features are a mix of those very old human ancestors and those people who lived more recently. That could mean that early relatives of humans left Africa and went all the way to Southeast Asia, which wasn't thought possible before. The find shows that the evolution of humans in the area may have been very complicated with three or more 
more species of humans living there around the time our ancestors did. One of these species was the small hobbit, or Homo floresiensis, which lived on the island of Flores in Indonesia until about 50,000 years ago. Scientists have figured out that the new pieces from Kalo Cave in north of Luzon were made between 67,000 and 50,000 years ago. They're made up of 13 bones, including teeth, hand and foot bones, and a piece of a femur that come from at least three adults and children. Since 2007, they've been found when the cave has been dug up. Number 13, Cave of Altamira. As long as everyone's behaving nicely, tourists will be permitted to visit the Cave of Altamira, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most amazing examples of ancient art in the whole world. Many other caves like this one are permanently closed so people can't damage them or do weird stuff in them. You know what people are like. The World Heritage List says that the paintings are about 14,000 years old. The cave is about 270 meters long and it has a strange shape. It has an entrance hall, a main gallery, and a side hall. It has some of the best prehistoric rock art in the whole world. The drawings are 14,000 years old and they show bison, deer, pigs, horses, and other animals. They're painted with a red ochre that have black lines around them. In the Neo Cave at Altamira Museum, the cave structure and paintings have been painstakingly recreated using the same painting techniques. This was done so people could see them, but the originals would remain safe. Visitors can look at the details of the great ceiling with its multicolored bison and visit the painter's workshop where they can learn about the techniques that were used to make this rock art masterpiece. Number 12, The Lost Leaders of Jamestown. An explorer, a nobleman, a soldier, and a chaplain were four people who might have been forgotten by history if they haven't been brought together to set up the first permanent British settlement in America. Their bodies have now been found 400 years after they died. A group of researchers led by forensic anthropologist Douglas Owlsey has confirmed that the remains of Reverend Robert Hunt, Captain Gabriel Archer, Sir Ferdinando Wayman, and Captain William West were found in the chancel of Jamestown Historic 1608 Church. This is where Pocahontas married John Ralph. In 2010, archaeologists found the church from 1608. This is when the bodies were found. They knew they were important people because the chancel is where the most important people in an Anglican church are buried. In 2013, they began to dig the graves up, and the research has given us a more complete picture of life, death, and religious beliefs at a key turning point in the history of settlement, when it was on the verge of failing because of famine and disease. Number 11. Ayahuasca fixings found in a 1,000-year-old bundle in the Andes. Archaeologists have found traces of the powerful hallucinogenic drink ayahuasca in a 1,000-year-old leather bundle in a cave in the Bolivian Andes. This means that today's hipsters, creatives, and entrepreneurs aren't the first people to try it by far. A chemical test on a pouch made from three fox snouts sewn together found at least five psychoactive substances that came from plants. They contained dimethyltryptyline, DMT, and harmine, which are two of the most important active ingredients in ayahuasca, a mind-altering drink that's often associated with the Amazon jungle. This is more proof that psychoactive plants have been used in rituals for thousands of years. Archaeologists found the ritual bundle at an altitude of 13,000 feet in the Lipez Altiplano region of southwest Bolivia, where llamas and alpacas roam. And it was in amazingly good shape. The leather kit was made by the Tiwanaku people, who lived before the Incas and ruled the southern Andean highlands from about 550 to 950 AD. And apparently they knew how to rule, and they knew how to get high. The plants in the bundle don't grow at those altitudes, so the bundle's owner may have been a traveling shaman or someone else who knew how to use psychoactive plants, or was part of a large network of people who traded medicinal plants. Number 10. Prehistoric human skeleton found in Mexican cave flooded at end of last ice age. A cave diving archaeologist on Mexico's Caribbean coast says that in early 2022 a prehistoric human skeleton was found in a cave that was flooded at the end of the last ice age, about 8,000 years ago. Octavio Del Rio and Peter Broger, another diver, said that they saw the broken skull and skeleton in a cave near where the Mexican government wants to build a high-speed tourist train throughout the jungle. Del Rio said that because the skeleton was so far from the cave entrance, it couldn't have got there without modern diving gear. This means that it must be older than 8,000 years, which is when the caves were flooded by rising sea levels. The skeleton was about 26 feet underwater and about a third of a mile into the cave system. Some of the oldest human remains in North America have been found in sinkhole caves called cenotes on the Caribbean coast of Mexico. Experts say that some of these caves are in danger because of the Maya Train tourist project that the government's working on. Let's hope they don't damage these incredible artifacts from the past. Number 9. 
Australian-led archaeological team discovered two million year old skull of human cousin. And in more news about our ancient cousins who are now strangely absent, an archaeological dig led by Australians deep in South African cave systems found a two million year old skull of a human cousin with big teeth. Do you ever wonder what might have happened to him? It's almost as if they had some close relatives who were very mean, bred like crazy, and liked killing everything they saw. And in the end, they wiped out all of their relatives. I'd really rather not meet that species. Uh Oh, right. Anyway, researchers at La Trobe University say that this is the earliest and best preserved example of the small-brained hominin called Paranthropus robustus that's ever been found. Number 8. An extraordinary discovery. Remains of Neanderthals found in Italian cave near Rome. We can't help ourselves when it comes to digging up the graves of our old relatives. In May of 2021, archaeologists found the fossilized remains of nine Neanderthals in a cave south of Rome that was used by people in the past. The oldest pieces of the remains are thought to have been made between 90,000 and 100,000 years ago. The other eight pieces are thought to have been made between 50,000 and 68,000 years ago. Skulls, pieces of skulls, two teeth, and other pieces of bone were found. The fossilized bones were found in a cave called San Felice Cerio, about 56 miles southeast of Rome. The cave is called Guattari Cave. Neanderthals are pretty close relatives of ours, especially if you're from Northern Europe, where people still have the highest percentage of Neanderthal DNA. In this case, archaeologists said that the cave was closed off by an earthquake or landslide 50,000 years ago, and that kept the environment from that time period in perfect condition. In addition to the Neanderthal bones, researchers found the fossilized remains of many other animals like hyenas, elephants, rhinoceroses, and giant deer. Number 7. Library of Alexandria Archaeologists from Poland and Egypt say that they found the original site of the Library of Alexandria, which had big lecture halls that could hold up to 5,000 students. People think that this library was the best library in the ancient world. The library at Pergamon, which was built many years later by Adelid kings who wanted to bring back the glory of Greece, was the only other library that could compare. Mark Antony gave several thousand scrolls from the Pergamene library to the library at Alexandria, for his beloved Cleopatra no less, but most if not all of those scrolls were destroyed in a terrible fire. No one can be sure, but the library held somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million scrolls. This was a tragedy for Western civilization, and as a result, we often have to rely on poor medieval copies of ancient literature. Though we are also lucky to have many Arabic copies of the works of Aristotle, Plato, and others, but a lot more was lost, and we must always remember that the voices we hear from the time of Percoles and his friends are only a tiny fraction of those that were once read out loud in the library's halls. Number 6. Sir Ernest Shackleton's Whiskey in honor of the discovery of Sir Ernest Shackleton's Endurance, one of the world's oldest, most famous shipwrecks, Shackleton Whiskey has hidden 15 bottles in some of the UK's most remote places, encouraging people to get in the spirit of adventure. The ship Endurance of polar explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton was found off the coast of Antarctica more than 100 years after it went missing. Explorers and researchers had to work hard in freezing temperatures to find the lost ship. The find has been called a milestone in the history of polar regions. In honor of the discovery of the Endurance, Shackleton Whiskey hid 15 bottles at places on its off-grid map. This map was made so that adventure seekers could get away from the online world and be completely offline. All you have to do to get a bottle is go to one of the locations and say Endurance to a team member there. The ship looked a lot like it did when Frank Hurley, Shackleton's photographer, took the last picture of it in 1915. Even though the masts are down and the rope is tangled, most of the hull is still there. The bow has some damage, which is likely where the ship hit the seafloor as it went down. All the anchors are even in place, and the subs found some shoes and some dishes. Number 5. How Southlieni Hypogeum The Hypogeum of How Southlieni is an underground Neolithic building near Poloa, Malta, that dates back to the Southlieni era, which was from 3300 to 3000 BC. It's often called the Hypogeum, which comes from the Greek word for underground. Archaeologists found the remains of over 7,000 people in the Hypogeum, so it's thought to have been a sanctuary and cemetery. It's one of the best examples of Maltese building temple culture, which made the megalithic temples and the Xagras stone circle. In 1902, workers digging cisterns for a new housing complex fell through the ceiling of the Hypogeum. The workers tried to hide the shrine at first, but eventually it was found. 
During the excavation, some of the items in the hypogeum, like grave goods and human bones, were taken out and thrown away without being properly recorded. The way the temple is built lets light in from the top down into the lower rooms. Parts of the ceilings are painted with intricate designs based on spots, spirals, and honeycombs. One of the main rooms, called the Holy of Holies, seems to have been built so the light from the winter solstice would shine through the original hole in the ceiling and light up the front of the room. Spectacular! Number 4. Hidden Palace of Ramses II now let's talk about a crazy new find from Egypt in 2019. At the site of a royal temple in New York, archaeologists have found a palace from ancient Egypt. The building is next to the Temple of Ramses II in the ancient city of Abydos. Abydos was an important city where the tombs of many early kings were also found. During excavations of the temple and the area around it, archaeologists found signs of the building. Sama Ikander, a researcher with the New York University Mission, said that the group found a stone path at the temple's southwest entrance. This led them to the entrance of another building with Ramses II's cartouche, which is a royal mark in hieroglyphics. Researchers also dug up the temple's cornerstones, which had similar royal symbols carved into them. The ministry said that these carvings and the newly found building will help archaeologists learn more about temples from this time period. Mustafa Waziri, who's in charge of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, has said that new information will cause researchers to change the temple's floor plan for the first time in about 160 years. Number 3. Lucy, the first Athrolopithecus afarensis skeleton. In the Awash Valley of East Africa, a young adult ape died one day during the Pliocene epoch. She was soon forgotten, and it would be 3.2 million years before anyone would see her again. During that time, her species died out, new apes popped up all over Africa, and some of them got really smart, which helped them basically take over the world. Then, 3.2 million years later, in what's now Ethiopia, two of these smart apes finally found her skeleton. When they realized that they found something important, they carefully dug her out of the sand. First, though, they decided to call their long-lost relative Lucy. When this was found in 1974, Lucy went from being a long-forgotten fossil to a famous hominid all over the world. Scientists only found about 40% of her skeleton, but that was plenty to tell a story about how humans have changed and the way that we think about evolution. Lucy walked on two feet, which was a big step in the development of humans. We know this from clues in her bones, like the angle of her femur in relation to the surfaces of her knee joints. This is an adaptation that helps animals walk on two legs stay balanced while walking. So most people know her as Lucy, but that's not the only name that she goes by today. In the area where she lived, which again is now Ethiopia, she's called Dinakinesh in Amharic. Lucy's a cool name, but Dinakinesh, which means you are marvelous, has a special meaning to it. Which name do you prefer? I prefer the second one. Number 2. Frozen Siberian mummies reveal a lost civilization. It was amazing that the warrior lived even for a short time after the arrow hit him. The three-pointed arrowhead, which was probably shot by an opponent on horseback, broke the bone below his right eye and got stuck in his skin. This was not the first time that this man was close to dying. He'd lived through a sword blow to the back of his head when he was young. This was a different kind of pain, though. The man probably begged to be killed. The thin cuts on the bone show where his friends cut through his cheek and then tried to remove the bone pieces with a small saw, but to no avail. He shows a crack in the head, and that reveals a final gruesome step. In a final, futile last attempt to get the arrowhead out, a doctor from long ago used a chisel to break into the bone, but with no success. After several more hours, or possibly a day, the man died. He must have been in a lot of pain. In 2003, the dead warrior's body was found buried with the bodies of 40 other people in a huge kurgan, or grave mound, in southern Siberia at a site called Arzan II. Number 1. The Surprising Discovery at Angkor Wat Angkor Wat is an important part of any trip to Cambodia. Go deep into the Cambodian jungle to find the lost city of Angkor, which is said to be the world's largest religious monument. Many temples are held together by huge tree roots. Beautiful bas reliefs tell old stories, and huge sandstones lie on the ground. It was first built as a Hindu temple for the god Vishnu, which went against what the previous kings have always done, which was worship the god Shiva. At the end of the 12th century, it slowly became a Buddhist temple, which is still used for worship today. After the Angkor Wat Temple's conservation team finished fixing up the northern cave, the Aspara National Authority found a mysterious wooden building at the bottom of a pond. It's thought to be a thousand years old. 
We've never seen anything like this anywhere else, and especially not at Angkor Wat, said a lead archaeologist. People from Cambodia and other countries have been studying the Angkor area for more than 150 years, but we've never found anything like this, affirmed the head archaeologist. The conservation team had never seen the wooden building before, so finding it was just a lucky break. He said that the building hadn't been fully looked at because only parts of it could be seen, but soon its mysteries may be fully revealed. Do you dream of being an archaeologist like Indiana Jones? Where would you start digging if you could pick anywhere to look for ancient civilizations? Let us know in the comments below. And check out our cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!